Hello and a warm welcome to Talking Stocks. I am Kukule Tukbele. In studio with me, I'm joined by Sean Ashton and David Gibb, both from Anchor Capital, as we take a look at Sun International. Good to have you with us here, gentlemen. When Thanks I think Sun International, automatically I think some kind of holidays or casinos and hotel groups, but uh, is this the accurate breakdown of the operations of the firm? Certainly a component of what you mentioned is, is the vast majority. I think a lot of people have kind of Sun City in their minds and mm. some of the hotels, but it's really a casino business. I think 85% or so of the profits come from, from the gaming operations. And yes, they do have hotels, but it's, uh, it's, it's more or less a casino gaming company. Mm -hmm. On the sustainability of that uh, business, when we take a look at the metrics, you know, market cap as well as uh, PE ratio and where the share price mm -hmm. is trading at the moment, how does it fare? So it's come down quite significantly. I think it's first important to point out that this is the second biggest operator in South Africa. They've got about 13 casino licenses out of, the, out of the 40 in total. They do have some licenses in Latin America as well, principally uh, Chile. Um, but uh, the, the share price has come well off its highs. It got to about 140 Rand and it's all the mm. way back to 100 Rand. Market cap's about 10.5 billion Rand, so still a sizable business. But they've got quite a bit of debt under, on, on the balance sheet, about 8.6 billion Rand's worth of debt. So I think the market's a little bit nervous about uh, gearing levels, but we still think it's a business that generates substantial cash flow to be able to to service those, uh, those debt commitments that they have. Mm. David, would you agree, uh, given the strong South African focus that the company has though? Yes, I mean, I guess it's all about confidence too. In this, it's a very much a fixed cost business, and you need to have throughput through your doors. And I, I guess what we're feeling, what we, what they're probably feeling at the moment in this business is a lot of their top end customers are not spending as much as they would typically, because they're maybe not feeling so confident about the outlook in the country. But that can change, mm. and that really then, I guess, your top end customers will. Um, you know, you'll see that kicking through in your bottom line profits the so moment they start spending a bit more again. Exactly. Sounds like a headline we're often familiar with when we read through company results, uh, the depressed consumer mm. environment. Does this also substantiate uh, the uh, firm's uh, plans to look offshore? I understand Chile has now come up. I think there's a part of it. I mean, they're, they're clearly in the eye of the storm of the consumer. And the way to think about a casino company or casino business in South Africa is it's a license to generate cash flows in a particular geographical region. You get allocated a license which is government-led um, and, uh, and nobody can actually develop a casino in your region for a de either a defined period of time or for an for a indefinite period of time. It depends on the license mm. conditions. But the, the drawback of that is that in a, in a weak consumer economy you can't necessarily go and just open a new store like a retailer in a, in a brand new jurisdiction. So you kind of have this asset on, on, on the balance sheet and, and you know, physical bricks and mortar in the ground and then you wait for people to come and spend money in there. And, and, and the key issue of what we've seen in recent years is that uh, the gaming statistics have been weak. So if you look at the South African economy, and the, and the Gauteng market is quite a good proxy because it's about 45% of the country's gaming spend. It was probably growing before the financial crisis at about 9 or 10% per annum, the Gauteng numbers. That then came off significantly into negative numbers through the financial crisis. And then it's it's recovered somewhat, but it's average from kind of 2011 through where, to, uh, where we are now mm -hmm. is probably about 4% up uh, in terms of year-on-year -year change on an annualized basis. And right now, it's a number that's a bit lower than that. So you're really not seeing dramatic growth coming through in terms of gaming spend. And Sun International, given that it's a fixed cost business, has actually had, had to take uh, restructuring charges to actually reduce their workforce, being the single biggest cost. So they've sure. done that. And it obviously benefited them last year, but as we go into the new financial year, there's less of that that they can do. Walk us through the, the fixed cost uh, element of it further. I understand there is a pie chart which breaks yes. it down into yeah. detail. So employee costs are about 25% of the total. There is a bit of variability in the form of uh, gaming levies and VAT on gaming revenue. So as gaming revenue variates, you would tend to see that that number moves around. And that's about 25%. So that's really the biggest single variable cost. Um, the rest is really depreciation, staff costs, uh, property rentals, uh, consumables, that type of thing. So we would estimate that probably overall I'd say 70% of the cost base of this business is fixed in relation to revenue. So if revenues are weak, it's highly likely that they take a margin squeeze. There's not much they can do outside of restructuring of the business. Mm. On the future prospects, though, uh, if we come to you, David, just to give us your view uh, on the company. As uh, uh, Sean has mentioned, some measures put in place in order to control the margins. But uh, is it a game of uh, trying to gain more dominance in the local environment? I know that there were recent talks with Soho Sun, but that didn't work out quite well as well. 
Well, I, I guess they, they're very strong in the major centres and there's going to be quite a lot of resilience uh, in those centres. So I would say the long-term future of these businesses is, you know, it's, it's, still, it's still very good. Hmm. Um, so I guess it's a matter of, of surviving a tough market, but they do have a lot of options. You know, they do have some offshore interests and on their local interests, there are a few things they can do. So I think they've got enough to play with. Uh, for, for this business to still have a very, very secure future over the long term. And, and there's a big new casino that's coming as well. I think that's the first, uh, the, 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 that's probably the key thing to mention. So the valuation reflects quite a lot of bad news um, and there's not much growth in the economy, but Pretoria as a market is one market that hasn't been well served by casino. So when you look at the karting market, you've got Silver Star in the far west strand, you've got Monte Casino in the middle. You've got Gold Reef kind of in the south, and mm. then you've got uh, uh, Carnival City on the southwest, and then Piermont's own asset in the in Empress Palace near the airport. But when you look at northern Gauteng, it's not well serviced. Um, and there's a there's a new casino license called Menland Main, which is really it's actually not a brand new license. It's the, mo the it's, it's the relocation of their Marula license yes. through to the Pretoria market. Uh, now that's going to be a big casino. That's two thousand slots, and about sixty. Uh, um, 60 tables if I'm not mistaken, which is quite similarly sized to Monte Casino. Uh, and Monte Casino we know is a business that does EBITDA or it's a, an asset that does EBITDA of north of a billion rand every year. Uh, Sun International has said that they expect at least 600 million or they're forecasting about 600 million rands worth of EBITDA from this 3 billion rand project, but I think it'll be significantly more. And, and I think by the time that commissions, which is going to be in September 2017, once, once it's fully up and running, we think that's a business that, depending on how they fund it, can, can potentially add f up to 40% to, to the profits sure. of Sun International on, on the current base. So it's a significant kicker to, to value when it, if, as and when it comes into their books. Sounds to me like this is a, a great buying opportunity then for this particular stock. It could well be. I think it's a, it's, it's a stock that's very out of favour. There's a very weak economy in South Africa. There are mm. some headwinds in terms of legislation. We know that there's potentially the risk of more taxes coming in or a tweaking to the tax rate on gaming and karting. We don't ha know whether that will or won't happen. Um, there's some license considerations in, in Latin America where the, the, the changing of the guard might result, might result in municipal licenses moving around for some of the casinos that they have there. And they're busy in the process of merging the assets with a business called Dreams there. So there's some uncertainty around that, how that plays out. Um, so those are all the things that are worrying the market at the moment. There's also the, the acquisition of Piermont Global, um, <coughs> which is going to come with it quite a significant call on capital. Um, so they already have, have communicated that they will place uh, 1.2 billion rands worth of shares at 120 rand a share, so that's fixed. But there's still potentially about 3.7 billion rands worth of equity that Sun needs to issue. Sure. And the price hasn't yet been defined. So as the share price goes lower, that creates potentially more dilution and the market's worried about that. Um, but I think with that whole transaction as well, there is the potential for them to carve out a lot of Piermont's non-core assets because Emperor's Palace is really 70% of what you're buying there uh, and bundle it together with Sun International's non-core assets because when you look at Sun International, um, of those 13 properties I mentioned, there's only five that are contributing 80% of profits. The rest mm. are quite bitty. Um, so they may well bundle those assets together and then, you know, either sell them off or separately as listed as a, as a different business and that may well reduce that potential capital call on, on, on the share. So I think there, there's a lot of uncertainty in Sun International at the moment. There's a, there's a lot of bad news in the economy and the share price reflects that. Uh, but certainly there's a couple of big kickers coming down the, down, the, the, down the line in the next few years that could add significantly to the profit base of this business. Mm -hmm. I just want to get your view on that as well, David, and again, maybe in comparison to its uh, counterparts, especially in South Africa, Soho Sun, is that not much competition for them right now? I'm not sure what the market share comparisons so, are there. Soho Sun is a lot bigger, but I think it's also important to realize that these, these businesses have geographical monopolies, if you want to think of it like that. So it's, it's not very easy to lure away a consumer who's gambling at Carnival City and send him, you know, bring him across to Silver Star because he's not going to drive yeah, that distance. across the width of, of Gauteng to do so. And these businesses don't really have pricing power. Think about the concept of a casino. Your consumer will walk in and decide what he's going to spend. There's not, there's not a defined product that he's buying. He's going to say, I'm either spending a thousand rand or I'm spending ten thousand rand and that's it. Mm. You might be able to tweak the, the machine handle and, and the, the retention ratios a little bit, but Ultimately, your punters are going to figure that out and they might go elsewhere. But 
ultimately, <coughs> it's, it's really the way to think about casino companies is it's a, a geographically defined profit pool is the best way to think about it. An all important question now whether to buy, hold or sell the stock. And I know we alluded to it briefly, Sean, but David, let's get your views first. Uh, buy, hold or sell uh, Sun International? Well, typically for me, if the business is a, a good, I mean, structurally a very good business, um, just going through a tough period and a tough period in the economy and that's certainly reflected in the in the share price rating so I would say this is this this would be a buy for me there's no you, you just put them in your in your bottom drawer and then you wait for some more confidence in the economy mm -hmm. and people to spend more so it's very much it would be a long-term investment for me Peter has an analogy. What, you buy the stock now and go away and come back in 10 years' time, <laughs> right? You're not waiting for any significant uh, changes within the for the next 12 to 18 months. Look, I months. think there's legislative risk that you've always got to keep an eye on. So it's perhaps not the most bulletproof business because we know that, that uh, the South African economy has got politics that plays a part as well. So you've got to keep an eye on it. I wouldn't say it's one that you don't watch for 10 years. Ah. But I think there's, there's fixed assets that have a value. It generates a lot of cash. It's not a troubled asset and they can easily service the debt levels that they have. Um, but what I would say is expect volatility in the short term. There's not really any short term good news. Um, but what we know is that well-located casino assets will continue to bring feet through the doors. This new Mellon project is going to be a very strong one for them, we believe. Um, and I think on a longer term, three to four year view, it would be a buy. Well, we'll leave it on that note uh, for Sun International today. Uh, it's a buy recommendation coming from both our experts from Anchor Capital. Well, that's where we leave it for this week's edition of Talking Stocks. A big thank you once more to Sean and David, both from Anchor Capital. Do catch us again next week where we talk more stocks. For the latest fundamental and technical analysis delivered right to your inbox, log on to talkingstocks.co.za and sign up for the Talking Stocks newsletter.